Hello everyone, uh, my name is Nirjhan and I am TA for Introductory Photonics course. So uh, welcome to the lab session of Introductory Photonics course. So today we are going to do the experiment of diffraction and interference of light. So we will see both the phenomena what we have seen in the class, same thing we will see here. So as we already know that diffraction is just light uh, bends at the sharp edges and interference is like two light waves interfering depending upon their phase. So same uh, uh, phenomena we are about to uh, observe here. So guys, uh, this is optical breadboard. It is used to hold the components. It has small holes, uh, if you can see, I'm not sure. So this, it has a small hole to hold the component. So generally the component, so there will be a component holder here. So you just place the holder. So this is a post holder. So this is a post. So so basically I have few diffraction cells here. So this is a diffraction cell. It has one small slit in between. Okay. It goes and fits into this. And then you can tighten it. Now you can put it on the mount. So uh, this is our slit. So similarly, I have a screen to observe the interference happening. So this is screen. So it, it is on the post and you can fix the screen anywhere on the breadboard. And then most important thing that we need here is a source of light. And as a source of light, I have a laser light. So this is a laser driver and this is a laser light. Okay. Once I switch it on, I can get a laser source from here. And then this is a laser mount to mount this laser. So it is on a holder. So just put the kinematic, this is kinematic laser mount. So now this is the optical, complete optical setup. Okay, now we can switch on the laser light. This is approximately at the center now. So uh, this is the final setup. And now uh, to the diffraction cell mount, I'll put the diffraction cell, which is a double slit here. So this is double double slit. I'm placing it in here. Now you can see the diffraction pattern for the double slit, and this is the interference pattern that we are getting for double slit. So if I remove double slit, and now if I put a single slit over here, now you can see the difference. So you can still see the patterns over here being formed from the single slit itself. So this is interference pattern we are seeing for the single slit. So now if I point the max central maxima, central maxima is somewhere here. And this is the first minima on both, if on one side, other side this is the first minima. And here second minima, second, third, and third, fourth, and fourth. Till fourth, it is visible so that we can mark. So, what I'll do is I'll just remove this from the post. So, so in both cases, we are observing interference here, but in this case, interference is from the single slit. The light source are bending at the edges of uh, the single slit and forming interference pattern, but in the uh, double slit, Di uh, lights were diffracting from the two slits and forming interaction pattern here. So this is a diffraction pattern due to single slit that we put it on a paper. So this is central maxima and all others are minima positions. So I will just put a scale for you if you can get any reading from the scale you can do this for yourself as well. So now, now if I put a simple wire just, just a wire and if I put it this wireframe over here you can see the diffraction pattern for the wireframe so this is diffraction pattern due to a single wire frame so now if you can see this is a central maxima and this is first minima here second minima third so So now, first minimum, second, one more, one more here, one 
over here somewhere. This is a diffraction pattern for a, a wire frame. So now if we also do the same for you and I put a scale, you can see again our central maxima has been pointed with the arrow and now if I put a scale and if you can see the scale you can again do the measurement and find out the width of the wire, diameter of the wire from the formula given in the manual. Okay, It is similar to the single slit, all the calculations will be similar. So you can do it for a wire and uh, similarly you can do it for human hair or any single strand, a small thin uh, strand of wire. So now if this is a, a circular aperture as I have shown you earlier and so now see the diffraction pattern due to the circular aperture. This is a, our circular aperture and this is a diffraction pattern that we get for circular aperture.